If you are not a Canva pro, you will be after this video. Today, we're gonna go over my top 10 plus different tips when it comes to Canva that many people do not know about. So no diddly daddling over here, let's get to it. So here's a quick design I made. I searched up mushroom using elements and then I put in this funny text. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna make sure that this is all centered. So to do this, I'm going to select everything. I'm gonna be coming up to position and then I'm gonna be hitting center. So that way I know that my whole design is centered together. Next, let's say that I want my text to match my little mushroom over here. So I want to change the color. So if I'm going to select both of the texts over here. I'm gonna to go to the color bar and either we have photo colors. So Canva automatically picks up different colors that are in the file and creates this little palette for you. But let's say I want this dark green and it didn't pick up that dark green for us. So what I can do is hit add a new color. And if you grab this little eyedropper tool in the corner here and then hover over your design, you can go in and pick any of the colors that are on your file. And then it's going to switch that object to that color. I really like this mushroom, but it's not my favorite, but I really, really, really like the style. And I can't seem to find it again on elements. One thing that you can do is if you click on the element and then in the top over here, there's this little eye button, which is the information. And it's gonna tell you who made this design. So you can actually click into here. It says view more from the creator. And then you're gonna get all of the other designs I created. And usually people make things in bulk. So you're gonna find mushrooms in the same style, look like they do a lot of florals, all in this watercolor style. So this can help you find extremely close other elements to add to your design. So let's see if we can find one here. Maybe I like this one instead. So I have this photo here and I did this all the time for my YouTube thumbnails. This is just one photo right here, but say I want the text to show up behind my head. Right now I can't because this is just one image. So what I'll do is I'll click on the background. I'm gonna hit Command Copy, Command Paste, and then I have a second image on top. I'm gonna go to Edit Photo, and then I'm going to do background remover only on this top layer. Now, once I have that, I can move this up and you can see that the text is now behind my head. And if I ever need to access everything again, Canva does have layers. You just have to go to position and then you'll find layers. And over here, you can see our background image, our text, and then me again. But one thing that's bothering me is I can't read the word you. So I'm gonna do an extra little effect here to make it kind of cool. So I'm gonna use my layers to grab the text. And then same thing, I'm gonna command copy and paste. You can also do this by right clicking and then hitting copy and then paste. And on this top layer, I'm just gonna align them. I'm going to go to effects. I'm going to do hollow. I'm going to make it small so it's not making my text too thick. And now you can still read the text, but I have this really cool text effect. And if I select both, you can see as I move it over myself, we're getting this really cool effect that you can read everything. I can keep moving this over and it's just a really cool Thing if you wanna make some cool effects using Canva. All right, now moving on to some mock-up hacks if you do print on demand or you like to make mock-ups. So the first one is getting rid of things that make a mock-up look not realistic. And for people who don't know, a mock-up is a photo of a plain shirt where you can upload your design onto it to make it look realistic. The problem for this one is there's quite a bit of wrinkles that I'm just not a fan of. It might not make it look realistic if say I put just a design on top. It doesn't look too real because it's not picking up the wrinkles. So what I'll usually do is I'll go to photo and then I go to magic eraser. I'm gonna increase the size and then I'm just gonna get rid of some of the wrinkles. And now look at the difference in that. I'm gonna go over the entire shirt, but just that one wrinkle. This makes this already look so much flatter so that our mock-ups can look more realistic. So here is the original file, and then here is the other file after I had all these wrinkles removed. And you can also do this with the necklace and use the magic erase over the necklace if that is also something that's just getting in the way of your design. Another thing that you can play with is if you click into this photo, you hit edit photo, and then you hit on a just up here. You can make some changes to this photo, including making it more brighter. You can change the temperature. If you have a certain like feel to your store, you can also select area. So you can edit the whole image, the foreground, which is the image in the front, which is going to be the model or the background. For this, I'm going to be doing whole image. And if we scroll down here, sometimes, depending on how complicated the picture is, you're gonna see something called color edit, which is gonna bring out some of the colors in your photo. And you can 
click these and you can actually change the hue of them to change that photo. I have done this with different lipsticks I've been wearing if I didn't like the color in the thumbnail or I wanted them to pop more. If I've taken a photo and one of the colors just didn't match kind of the vibe that I wanted. Again, this is something that if the photo is more complicated, it only picks three colors. So it's not gonna work too well always, but for a simpler photo like this, it does work really well. And I can kind of play with the color of the sweatshirt. Now let's talk about fades and gradients, which are decently new to Canva. But if you hit R on your keyboard, you're going to get a rectangle that you can move around. And if you click on the color, and you go to the color documents and add a new color, you can now choose between solid color and a gradient, and you can change up the colors. So say I wanted to do this orange, but maybe I actually don't even want orange at all. I want this to be clear on one side, and then I want this to be black on one side. I'm gonna change this to change the direction of the gradient as well. And now I've created a fade into my design and I can keep changing this up if I want it to be a little bit more. What I can do is just add another color. I'm gonna add another black as well. And then that just makes it a little bit thicker. And if I want to delete a color, I'm gonna hit that. And then if I did want this to be a color, I'm gonna turn up the opacity again. And now we have a gradient fill in this rectangle. But say we want our text to have a gradient. Right now that option is not there. If you just grab your text, you're not gonna see that option between the solid color and the gradient color. So what you need to do is you need to use an app and we're going to use this app called Type Gradient. So you can just search that up and this is gonna come up. And then you can put in whatever you wanna type here. So we can put hello friends. The only issue here is your downloaded fonts are not gonna be on here. You can really just select from the Canva fonts, but there's already so many in here. So you can go through this, you can see what it's going to appear like. And then down here, I can change the line height, which is the spacing between my two different lines. I can go back up, change the font. And then I can also change the colors as well by just selecting the boxes here, playing with these a little bit more. And then by moving these, we can also add in another one. By clicking on them, we can also delete it. Depends how crazy you really want to go with this. I'm gonna delete this one here, it's a little bit much. I'm gonna move this over so the gradient isn't as crazy. And then once you're happy with your design here, you can just hit add to design. And now you have this really cool font effect for your designs. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can create a wavy text font without leaving the Canva app. And the first one requires that we have a text ready and we want to center it on our file here. So just the center of our file. So to do that, I just created a text. I brought it to both ends of my design file and then I centered the text. And I'm also going to grab a ruler over here, which you can do by just hitting the very corners or very edges of your Canva file. And this file is 5,000 by 5,000 and it should lock by hitting, usually it'll snap to the midpoint, but you can see 2,500, that's half of 5,000. So that's my midpoint here. Now with this design, I actually wanna split it into two halves. So I'm going to delete this, move this back to the right side, and then I'm going to paste in this again, and I'm gonna finish the sentence, and I'm gonna align it so it looks right. And then on the first half, I'm gonna to go to effects, I'm gonna to go to curve, and I'm gonna adjust this down and take note of how much I'm curving this. So this one I curved 70. So now on this half, I'm gonna do the same thing, curve, but I'm gonna to go to negative 70. You can also just type it in and then realign these again. And there we go. Again, you can make this less curved if you would like. If you want to have multiple layers, you can keep going down, you can change the text, but that is the first way to do it right within Canva. The next way is to do it using a tool called Typecraft. And you can find this in apps and look up Typecraft. It looks like this purple one. The only downside is similar as to the other app that we had used. It only uses the Canva fonts, but you can change up your wording here. Hello friends. And then using all the anchor points here, you can move these and you can make a wave. And there we go. It is a little bit hard to get it exact. It might just take some playing with. And then you can add element to design when you've created it. And now you have a wavy font in here. Not the best font I picked and you should spend more time on it, but that's how you would do these 
within Canva. If you wanna watch my favorite way to get wavy text though, I'm gonna link my video up here. This does require leaving Canva and using a tool called PhotoP, but it's the most exact way to get the wavy font. So I'm gonna link that up here if you wanna watch that after. Another tool that I use literally every day is using Duotone to change the color of files. So you can see here that this actually isn't text. This is a PNG that I brought in. And because it's a PNG, I don't have the ability to change the color of this file. But I need a white version because I'm gonna also be printing this on a black shirt and black and black is not gonna show up. So what I'm gonna do is go to edit photo under effects, under the duo tone right here. I'm gonna select any of them and then I'm going to change both of these. You can either change just the highlights or just the shadows, but because I am changing this to white, I'm just gonna change both of these to white. And now you can see if I change the background photo here that I have changed the color of my file completely. And my last little hack is how to create your own custom Canva frames. So this one actually does have quite a bit to it and I realize I'm running really long on this video. So I did release a full tutorial on how you can turn literally any thing from Canva or anywhere into your own custom frame. And by own custom frame, I mean that you can drag in a photo and it's going to snap to a certain shape. So I'm gonna link that here and link that up as my next video as well. So go ahead and give that a watch.